Today, we'll be looking at how we can change already existing light as well as how to create light completely from scratch using different layer modes and adjustment layers. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus and I've been creating complex photo composites for almost 10 years now. Adjusting and creating lighting is always a big part of that process. All resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. Now let's create some fiery lighting effects. Let's start things off by quickly setting up our environment. In this case, the majority of light will be behind the subject. Later on, we'll also be adding a smaller light source coming from the bottom left corner. So let's place an image of a large fire right behind our subject and then add a filter, blur gallery, field blur of around 13 pixels or so. Stuff like that is always up to you, however. Go ahead and experiment. Next, at the top of our layer stack, we want to create a selective color adjustment layer, affecting the reds, yellows, neutrals, and blacks. Then let's add a punch of brightness with a brightness contrast layer set to a brightness of 22. We're going to group those two adjustment layers together and then lock them as they'll stay at the top of our layer stack from here on out. Next, we want our subject placed right in the center of the canvas. Go ahead and extract them using your preferred method. Now, let's add an image, adjustments, curves, and bring down the highlights pretty significantly. Our subject in this case is exceptionally bright, so we want to make sure uh, to dull all of those highlights. I do recommend working with smart objects as settings like these may need to be adjusted as you go. Once we're happy, we can start laying down our shadows. Create and clip a colorful layer into the subject, setting it to a dark muted blue color. Setting its layer mode to multiply. I do recommend using cooler, less vivid colors for shadows as that'll help keep your image from looking muddy or dull. Let's adjust the shadows blend if settings by double clicking the layer and then holding alt to adjust and split the toggles. Pull the white toggles to the left to let a small amount of the subject's highlights come through the color fill layer. Select the color fills layer mask and invert it using control I. Now we're going to take a semi hard round brush at around 70% hardness and set to white. And then we're going to mask the inner portion of our subject. Keep the shadows structured and try to follow the natural shapes of the subject's head and jacket, creating shapes and not just blobs of darkness. Once happy with the first round of shadows, we're going to duplicate the color fill layer, delete the layer mask, and adjust the blend if so that even more of the highlights can shine through. Then we can add a new layer mask, invert it, and paint in some deeper shadows on the innermost portion of the subject. Take your time painting shadows, and don't be afraid to go back and forth between the two color fill layers. From here on out, creating and painting a highlight or a shadow could mean going back and adjusting the ones you've already made. It's a back and forth process, so make any adjustments you might need uh, to make as you go. So on this subject, the necklace still has a large amount of shine to it. Let's create another colorful layer set to a burnt orange color with a layer mode of darken. Add a layer mask, invert the layer mask, and then mask the color back in over the chain and zippers of the jacket. 
you can leave some of the highlights on the chain if you think they may be catching a bit of light. Just zoom in nice and close and mask out the highest parts of the chain. Creating structured shadows like this helps make an image feel a bit less flat. And with our shadows laid, we can move on to our lighting. Let's start with some general lighting. Create and clip a new layer into the subject, setting it to overlay and bringing its opacity down to around 60%. Take a large soft round brush and paint in a semi-bright orange color around the subject. Set the flow of the brush to 20% or less so you can build things up nice and slowly, build light up nice and slowly. Uh, you don't have to be precise, but keep the shape of the subject's features in mind. Try to follow the ridges of the hair and the curves of the jacket. Now over the next couple of steps, we're going to paint in our rim lighting. We'll be using four main layer modes, screen, lighten, color, and color dodge. The number of layers used will be up to you. The idea is to build light up slowly. So whether you do this in four layers or 24 layers, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. So let's start with just one layer for now, set to screen and clipped into our subject. And for our brush, let's start with a smaller soft round brush set to a flow of 20% or less. However, your brush size and hardness will change as you paint. Let's use a brighter orange color to bring light onto the edges of the higher portions of the subject. Keep a light hand while painting and as always build the color and light up slowly, making sure the ends taper and blend really nicely. Once happy with our initial rim light, we can enhance it with a layer set to lighter color. Placing that layer above the rim light and using the same semi-bright orange color from the first general lighting phase. Though your colors don't have to be exact, just stick to general reds, oranges, and yellows. Uh, feel free to experiment a little bit with the colors. You can always adjust the colors using image adjustments hue saturation if you don't end up loving how the colors uh, mix and match with each other. So after a round of screen and lighter color layers, we can add a layer set to Color Dodge. Color Dodge will brighten and add both contrast and color to everything beneath it. A little too much, in fact. So to keep it contained in the highlights, as that's the only thing we want to brighten at the moment, let's use Blend If and pull the black toggles to the right. Now we can paint using a bright yellow orange color without worrying about the lighting bleeding into the shadows. Repeat those same techniques using the same colors and layer modes to add rim lighting to the glasses and further enhance the current rim light. Keep your blush flow rate nice and low and take your time. We're going to finish up the subject layers lighting with one last layer set to color dodge at 50% opacity. Set the brush to a medium soft round brush with a low flow of 10% or less. The flow rate being low is incredibly important as you'll want to be very careful about building up your light slowly. Uh, set the color to a vivid reddish orange color. And on this layer, we're going to add that orange color onto the highest points of the face. 
as well as her glasses and jacket. The higher the area, the more light it will be catching. So focus on places like her forehead, higher cheek areas, and lips. Make sure there is a smooth transition between values. As always, take your time and use multiple layers and adjust their opacity if you need to. For the flow rate, I'd actually recommend going as low as 1%. Um, as that is what will give you the most control out of your brush if you're having problems of laying too much color. That can be a particularly big problem for any mouse users. Next, a new layer sets you overlay. With a very large soft round brush, we can build up a vivid orange glow around the subject, focusing on the subject's left. Remember to keep the forms of the subject in mind even when doing more general lighting like this. Also, lower the opacity of the layer if the effect seems too strong. Next, we can use that same brush and color to build up lighting on a couple of new layers set to screen. In total, I used around three or four layers, each with a different opacity and a slightly different shade of orange. I keep the flow rate of your brush low to give you more control, as always, and you could also bring some of that glow behind your subject. Let's finish up by giving the subject one last bit of rim light by duplicating the subject, bringing that duplicate below the original, adding a color overlay layer filter, filling it with a bright orange color, then right click convert to smart object and set that layer mode to lighter color. Finally, nudge the layer up a few pixels and use the warp tool to bring some of the orange rim light onto the jacket. You can also mask out any areas that seem overly solid or flat. Finish up by duplicating the background fire layer, bringing it below the locked color graded group and setting it to screen. Then we can position it so that the fire appears in the bottom left corner and some of the embers are floating over the subject's face. And finally, let's create a curves layer, bringing up the highlights. And then going into blend if settings to remove the curves from the shadows. This will make it so the curves are only affecting the highlights of the image. Let's invert the curves layer mask and then mask back in some of those highlights over the subject's left side or any area where you want things to be a bit more bright. And that is how to add light in Photoshop. If that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you liked this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.